What's going on, people? In this episode, we're gonna be doing our first guitar battle. Jorge Lanza sing now. We break it down, baby. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for being here once again. Remember, as usual, like, subscribe, and do all those cool little things that we like to do on YouTube so you and I can stay in touch with each other. And without further ado, let's start on the red corner. ERS SE Custom 2408. And this one comes at around 900 buckaroos, US dollars, that is. Uh, I've seen it for like 920, 930. 950, I don't know. I think that they might be like a price hike right now. But maybe not everybody is like caught up to it. And in the used market, I see it maybe going for like 650 at the very low end. And maybe like uh, 800. Sometimes I see that they have like chips and stuff. People that don't treat the guitars nicely, yeah, they're going to sell it for like say 50. So... If you're okay with that, maybe that's the guitar that you're looking for. And without further ado, on the blue corner, we have the <laughs> Gibson Les Paul Studio Plus, I guess it's called. <laughs> and this one comes in at around $1,700. So I don't know. You tell me. It does look really good. And it does say Gibson on the headstock, although. As you can see right here, it doesn't say Gibson in the Pearloid or the Mother of Pearl. It's like that little sticker. So I don't even know. I don't even know. You tell me in the comment section. Is this guitar worth it? I mean, it looks good. Look at the flame right there. I think it's it, that it's pretty nice. And it's got a nice carve. Look at that. The belly. Look at the belly. So yeah, I think it does look pretty good for Alice Paul, right? So why don't we talk about a few of the similarities in these guitars. So first and foremost, both of them have a mahogany body and uh, they both have rosewood fretboard with uh, acrylic perloid looking inlays. Uh, in the case of the PRS, of course, we have the birds and this is like a, the trapezoid version. Um, they both have a maple top, although this one is a figured maple top. In this one, it's a plain maple top with a nice looking veneer that looks looks pretty, pretty good, I think. They both have humbuckers uh, and they're both like tappable to sound, to sound a little bit more like a single coil or like a P90, I would guess. They both have three toggle <laughs> switches and uh, they both have the three on the side tuner design. And that's, I think, where the similarities end. Now, what's different in both of them to begin with is that the PRS has 24 frets and the Gibson has only 22. Second difference, that the PRS has a tremolo, vibrato, whatever you want to call it. It has a wiggle stick and the Gibson doesn't. It has that stop bar tail piece or what do you call it? A hard tail? That's a big difference, I would say. Then, of course, the Gibson has two volumes, two tones. And to tap the coils, you push pull them. The PRS has only one volume and one tone, and you use those two little guys right there to split the coils. The other big, big difference. Tone woods. He said it. Okay. <laughs> we have a maple neck in this one, and we have a mahogany neck on the Gibson. So um, those are, I think, serious differences. And. The other ones were similarities. Then the other thing, I think both of them say that they have uh, medium jumbo frets, but I kind of want to say that the PRS ones are a little bit fatter and taller than the Gibsons. But even then, I mean, both of them feel really good. So why don't we listen to a few tones? Let's go get the amps ready. Okay, here we are back and we have some sound. <laughs> uh, first and foremost, I want to tell you that uh, I kind of like try to level the guitars uh, on the way out from the actual instrument into my system because I like to know that I'm hitting the amp and the gain structure kind of like at the same level just to actually kind of like appreciate what the tone differences are more than just how much they distort. So uh, let's start with the neck pickup and super simple open chord so that we can actually hear the differences in tonality and timbre.
Now this is into the middle position. Now let's listen to the bridge position. Now let's tap all the coils, see what's up over there. Middle position. Now let's do the neck position. Now let's listen to the middle position party trick sounds. Now let's do the reverse of that, which is split bridge and full humbucker on the neck. So I don't know if you noticed, but I feel like um, right then and there, like right out of the bat, I feel like definitely when you split the coils, the PRS sounds a lot like a Strat or like an actual single coil. Mm, I used to think maybe more like a P90, but if you compare it to this one, I would think, I don't know, this is so ballsy when you when you use the, toil, the coil tap. 
that this makes me feel like this might be more like a P90-ish more than actually the PRS. The PRS has a like really jangly, like it could really pass, I think maybe for like a Strat or like a Tele at some point. Of course, maybe if you tweak the amp a little bit, but it's pretty surprising, huh? Do you want to hear a few distorted sounds? I do. All right, now let's start in the bridge position, volume all the way up, tone all the way up on both guitars. So let's just go. Middle position, I guess. If you want to meddle in the middle position. Now let's hear the neck position. There you go. I'm not going to make you sit down and watch all throughout the old million tones because I feel like for this kind of like riffy tone that I have right now going on, that's kind of like what you would do, you know, full humbucker and you will just like metal it up. So I'm not going to make you listen to millions of coil split different positions and stuff. So whatever, let's just go to the other guy and hear a few conclusions, see what we ask, what we have to say about this guitarist. All right. So there you have it. PRS SE, a $900 guitar compared to a uh, Gibson Les Paul Studio for $1,700 in the new market, right? So I, what are the takeaways that I have from this? I feel like um, the PRS, it's uh, in this case, this Custom 2408 SE, the Indone Indonesian version, uh, definitely is trying to be a guitar that it's gonna allow you to cover a lot of ground with, right? And I feel like the focus on their pickups, it's a little bit more nostalgic in the way that it sounds a little bit more vintage. Like when you split the coils, it sounds a little bit more like a Strat or like a Tele. And in the case of the Gibson, I feel like the pickups are trying to be a little bit more modern. And by modern, I don't mean like Fishman Fluence modern type or like, I'm talking about like 90s, you know what I mean? Hot pickups, passive pickups, modern. So <laughs> take it with a grain of salt, whatever I'm saying right now. But as soon as you split it, uh, that one is just like, I feel like their intention was not to make the guitar sound like a Strat or like a Tele, but mostly like maybe if you were like pushing like an amp to the edge of breakup with your um, humbuckers, as soon as you split the coil, it cleans up a little bit. And I think that's maybe what they were trying to do instead of just trying to make it sound like a Strat or try to replace a Strat. And I think that's a great thing to do. That's something that I really know, uh, know that I really notice, and I know how to appreciate right now in, in different kind of guitars. Uh, the more they try to do themselves, the better they sound. Because for example, right now, as you could hear in these uh, uh, different examples, I tend to uh, steer in the direction of the PRS because I love how versatile it is. And like almost anything that I want to do, let's say if I'm in a writing session and I know if I pull my PRS, I'm going to be able to do almost any tone that I want to need to do. If, if I need distortion, I know I can have a good distortion tone. And just a little caveat that I wanted to say, the clean tones that you were hearing right here are made with a Strat. <laughs> and the uh, distorted tones are made with the Les Paul. So actually, they're a little bit more optimized for this pickups. So just take that for what it's worth. But I think the comparison is still valid because you can hear the differences in the mid-range for the most part. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Gibson is trying to make it sound like a Gibson. And let me tell you, it does sound like a Gibson. Like, there's nothing about this guitar that, that doesn't scream Gibson to me. Maybe it doesn't scream Burst. 
Maybe it doesn't scream 1959 Gibson, but it's just like, as soon as you, it doesn't matter if it's clean or if it's distorted. It sounds like that, at least in my mind, maybe because of my age too, and maybe I'm dating myself right now. But I remember all those guitar tones from the 90s and the early 2000s. Uh, very, very, very clearly in my mind, like I can hear them. And as soon as I plug this guitar in, that's exactly what it sounds like. And of course, people like Trogli or, or really great historians about Gibson would say, oh yeah, it's because the combination of pickups that you're listening there is the combination that they used to have in the 90s in the custom shop in Gibson. And yeah, that might be true. Maybe that's exactly why it sounds like that. And that is great. Because honestly, when I, when I first uh, got the guitar, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. You know, I wanted to hear that Gibson because I don't have the nostalgia of it, like the 59s or whatever. And if anything, I kind of want to say that the PRS, to go to the other opposite, they are trying to sound like other guitars in this particular instrument, at least. I feel like um, it does have something very PRS-y. And I think it's like if you if you go back and listen to the examples right now and pay close attention to where the mid-range kind of like honks, like wah, wah, wah. think about where it modulates and... <laughs> That was hilarious. Uh, and I think that um, where it modulates, if you imagine, uh, and I think the captain said this really clearly, um, it does sound like a Santana kind of like tone, like wah, wah, that little Tony. But if you think about it, most of like SG tones or, or, or like we said, like even bursts, they kind of have like that honky uh, mid-range. So maybe that's kind of like what they were trying to channel here. But as soon as you try to split the coils or tap them, uh, it does sound like, a, like a, almost like a, like a Strat, I want to say. Or, or like a telly, it, it does sound very jangly, especially in that mid position or uh, in the neck. It does sound to me very, very stratty. Maybe I don't know because if it was like in contrast, like very directly with Les Paul, that I felt like that very, very clearly and very defined. So I'll be very curious to try the USA pickups on this PRS. But then again, I've heard so many people saying like, oh, I don't know if it's worth it or not. I mean, I have the pickups already. It's just gonna be a lot of work to do. And I do like the work that I can get done with this guitar. And just to try to circle back to what I said in the beginning, as tools, what do I think of them? Let's say if you're, uh, I don't wanna say struggling musician, but if you're a musician that maybe you live in a different part of the world uh, that we do, and uh, maybe uh, your acquisition capacities are way different that we have here or that people in America have, um, I'm gonna tell you, if you buy a, a, a PRS, I do think I would think that you will be really, really well served, especially if you're like a live uh, musician, because you're gonna be able to cover a lot of ground, almost very authentically, instead of having to pull out a Strat, having to pull out a Gibson, because I don't think that if you have, buy one of these Les Pauls, you're gonna be able to do the tones that it say if you have, if you are like a casino band or something like that. You know what I'm trying to say? That you have to play different sounds and different songs. Um, so you cannot just have maybe one guitar, but if that guitar was a PRS SC Custom 2408, uh, not sponsored by the way, maybe you're able to do all those tones with one guitar. As long as you get clever, you know, with your amp and your pedals, whatever your rig might be. Um, so I think you, you might be really, 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 really pleased with that guitar and save a lot of cash. So yeah, versatility, definitely the PRS. If you want to sound like a Gibson, you need to buy the Gibson, at least in this case. Like I'm telling you, as soon as I picked it up, that Gibson sounded exactly like a Gibson. The PRS has never sounded like a Gibson to me. <laughs> Unless, like I said, maybe like, it has an SG kind of vibe, I feel, right now that I listen to them both compare. But again, what is G? With what pickups? So then you go, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's very complicated to make this uh, kind of like a statement. But if you know what I'm talking about, and I bet you do know what I'm talking about, <laughs> um, these do sound, uh, the PRS sound a lot more vintagey, and the Gibson sounds a lot more like a modern Gibson. And that's exactly what's going to give you forever. So let me know in the comment section down below, what do you think about these two guitars? Do you think that you should be paying almost a thousand bucks more for uh, the Gibson? Or do you think that you'll be well enough with the PRS? What is your case scenario? You know, because I, like I said, I have both of them and I feel happy with both of them. I use them both. And most likely if I use, I use the Gibson in a, uh, in a song, most likely I'm going to use the PRS in that same song too. 
because they have such a different voicing that in my case scenario for the studio, it helps me like achieve like nice width sometimes if that's what I want to do. But let's not get too geeky. And remember, like if you like this video, definitely subscribe. Stay warm, stay safe. Go to the comment section down below and let me know what you think. Other than that, I'm out. <laughs>